Sacred Heart charging towards finals and Brighton looking for fifth spot when it comes down to the nitty gritty in September. It's Jack Moore alongside Matt Gale for this Division 1 match in the Adelaide Footy League. And a lot promises here in round 15. Some very important matches for all sides in the division and this one no exception. Certainly is Jack. It's a delight to be here at the Glenelg Oval, otherwise known as the Stratorama. Uh, brilliant to be at an SNFL venue this afternoon for what is an impelling game we've got on our hands this afternoon. All these games, of course, streamed live, exclusive, on demand, anytime. Filming footy YouTube page here thanks to Sports Interactive and the Adelaide Footy League. Our match day sponsors include Buddy Bet, Sporto, our scoreboard sponsor, Dartfish for Stats, and Player of the Day will win themselves, of course, a Dartfish beanie. And a pair of Archies arch support thongs. Coach of the Week Award and the Media Award for Player of the Year brought to us by Farmers Leap Winery at Padthaway and Roll the Dice. And the Goal of the Week, thanks to Thirsty Camel, Mark of the Week, Bianco. All those four exciting prizes and competitions featured on the Adelaide Football League Facebook page and the Between the Posts show. These two sides come in with differing form lines. Sacred Heart third, 11 and three on the table. And Brighton six in a three-way battle with Tea Tree Gully and Broadview for that fifth and final finals position at six wins and eight losses. This oval, well, both teams haven't played on it this season. Sacred Heart had a game here in the finals run of Division Two footy in 2022. So no home ground advantage. Weather seems clear. It could be anyone's game. It certainly could be. Um, delightful to be here, as I mentioned earlier. There is a fairly strong win advantage to the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, getting out to about 25 knots this afternoon. It should be uh, scorable at both ends, though. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you're looking forward, this ground is actually quite um, firm at all levels of the ground. I've walked out the ground there. The centre cricket pitch is actually in really top niche at the moment, top notch, and um, expected to be one in the middle, although, the Sacred Heart lovers, the Bone Crusher McRae, who's done his ACL, so he's a big out this afternoon. Massive out. Other games in round 15 available right now to stream at your pleasure. Goody Saints and St. Peter's in an entertaining battle as Saints look to push their unlikely claims for that finals position. But a win, you would say, for Saints in that one would relegate St. Peter's effectively and push Saints clear. But a St. Peter's victory and their chances of playing in Division 1 next season are still on. Broadview hosts Glenunga at Broadview Oval as they look to chase down that fifth spot, but there's no tougher opponent in Division 1 than Glenunga right now. Prince Alfred hosts Old Ignatians in uh, what is simply put a battle of percentage and how much Prince Alfred can win by will keep you updated. Port District and Tea Tree Gully. Again, Gully's looking to chase down that fifth spot. Port District currently in fourth. And right here, Stradorama Stadium is where our match of the day is with Jack Moore and Matt Gale, Sacred Heart, Old Collegians and Brighton Bombers. We are minutes away from the start. Matt, what are you looking for in this uh, entertaining one this afternoon? Looking forward to the duo of uh, Kalado and Kakuro on the half-forward line for Sacred Heart. Uh, Kakuro's uh, got 28 goals to his name this season with third um, on the leading goal kicker for Division 1, whilst Kalado does um, do a lot of work on the ruck, but he's got 21 goals to his name. And all of the experience of over 100 games for the South Adelaide will come to the fore this afternoon. Um, also up forward for the Brighton team, they've actually got two in top, two inside the uh, top 10 as well, which is Wellsby with 24 goals and Jared Miller um, with 22 to his name. Um, but like I said, it's a battle of the midfield. This is going to be a huge game, particularly for the Brighton Bombers, if they're going to make finals. We just checked out earlier before the call started, and Broadview have uh, the three bottom teams in the final three rounds. Brighton need to win two of these final four, including the one today if they're going to make it, because they've got a game against Tea Tree Gully and Old Ignatians in the final round of the season. Um, so Tea Tree Gully, a bit of a sitting duck at the moment in fifth position and talking to some of their hierarchy after the game last week. Not expected to do much if they do see September action, but we've got a great team. In, in, uh, both teams are really uh, going to have a red hot crack today, but expect Sacred Heart to make a bit of a statement, I think, as they um, prepare for their first Division One final series for a long time. Sacred Heart after a mid-season hiccup, they lost to Glenunga and... 
Just taking you through uh, those results, they uh, were unfortunate in a loss to Glenunga and it came unstuck against Prince Alfred. They're since on a five-game winning streak, which includes wins against Port District, Broadview, Goody Saints, and last week a most impressive win at Park Nine against Prince Alfred, while the Brighton Bombers coming off a very impressive win against Port District. Some new faces to both teams this afternoon for Sacred Heart. Chester Forster in the 52 and Nicholas Jordan in the 60 come in to the side. And always a welcome inclusion for Bride and Ricky O'Loughlin. John Cock is back in in the number 19 for Bride. And the umpire has the ball in his hand. And here is Matt Gale on filming footy. So Noble to start the ruck duties up against Draper. Draper gets the tap to ground. So plenty of numbers around the pill here for Sacred Heart. Comes out to Simon, but he's quickly tackled and holding the ball. And that's a, uh, they've played on with advantage. And unbelievably, that's a high tackle that's been paid as holding the ball. So, a bit of a dilemma there from the umpire. May have been excused. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. You've got to know got sometimes folks. when your team has the free kick to stop and observe the surroundings. You certainly do. So Simon's dropped the mark there. Draper out the back. I think his kick was touched. Comes out the back to his opposing Ruck Ruckman and Noble. Noble dishes off to McDermott. So a string of hand passes a half back. They're mucking around with it. Kerris finally gets his hand pass out. Quick to, to the half forward line. Big strong punch away. They've still got the numbers here. They go inside 50 for the first time. Courageous oh. mark by McGarry. McGarry just using all his experience going back and reading the flight of that ball. And moments ago it was Jarman Sigal who came up the ground and left his man to impact that initial contest with a great fist. Jeez, that was a crazy mark by McGarry. Umpires this afternoon, Chris Rush, Marek Carls and Matt Harris out there in the green with the whistles. On the outer wing now, and a strong tackle coming in, back in the team, O'Loughlin, John Cock. Won himself a free kick, the first free of the afternoon for the Bombers. And sprinting down the wing is Segal, he's... Left all by himself as it goes long and up early and perhaps a couple of hands in the wrong spot from Wellsby. Free kick and a relieving one. Kerry's just gone to the bench, looks like with a cork or a ankle injury as we speak. Just hobbling off there and replaced by Elijah Laub, so his first action of the day. A shock just carefully and cautiously bring it out of their D50. As the runners into the field and the kick is smothered and that'll give Brighton a chance. But it's dealt with in pretty nice fashion by the midfield defensive duo. Wrapped up about 70 around from the shot goal. So both teams starting to fill themselves out. Lovely two, day, isn't two, it? It's Stradorama. It's, it uh, is. So two minutes down. And a massive crowd is packed in for this one. A special venue, of course. Neither one of these teams' home venue, but a welcome return to Sandful ground for the Adelaide Footy League this afternoon. Just trying to work out who's actually the home team because it is a sacred heart game, but obviously both teams live within the region of the Glenelgo. Beautiful kick inside 15 for McDermott. That's punched away. Should go out of play. And a nice punch there by Jack Loy. And the ball will be thrown at about 60 from home. And Brighton, even though it's heart. only early, just doing a good job of forcing Sacred Heart wide with their forward 50 and forward half attacks, just keeping them away from the corridor. Good throw in. Draper gets the tap down. Strongly tackled. There was more. And we'll have a throw up about 52 from home. And equal numbers inside forward 50 as well. Draper from over the back. Taps it down. Could work there by Noble at ground level. Gets it out towards Rankin. Some slippery work there by Lovelock. Switches play to Simons. I think he's within range here, Simons. He's a deadly kick. And, I, and I think he got our best on ground last time we commentated, Jack. Mm -hmm. So uh, he did kick a couple of similar goals from this distance on a muddy patch at Sacred Heart Middle School last time around. Amazing ESP from Simons. He began to run to the spot where he marked it even before his teammate had possession of the footy. So Simons from 48 just fades to the left. So our first score on the sport of scoreboard, four minutes down and Sacred Heart one solitary behind. Brighton yet to score. Simons reads the game so well. He's 
up there and undoubtedly will be in the running for their MVP come the end of the season, wherever it ends for Sacred Heart, this magical path through their return to Division 1. It's been a season that some can say, and most will admit, they probably wouldn't have expected. Knocking off Prince Alfred at Park 9 is something the best teams only do, and they had the privilege of doing so. As Colotto chases it down, runs a route, but the ball beats him out of bounds. Smart play there by Colotto because he not only kept it in play but almost provided an opportunity for a, for a goal op, uh, goal scoring opportunity and using all of his wit and experience. He was the one who kept it in and chased down his own crumbs. The boundary umpire has it, throws it in and nice tackle coming in from the side, Higgins. Roughly about 30 out from the shot goal. Interesting, Ned Brooks doing the ruck work inside 450 for Sacred Heart. Throwing out of it, umpire blindsided, couldn't see, play goes on, floated towards the goal square, 20 out and punched out, and the Brighton defence are organised early. They certainly are, and they've noticed that the Colotto is not going into the ruck, so they put a, a one on two in that last contest, which is excellent to see. So Sacred Heart locking that ball inside Ford 50 for the past few minutes. Colotto puts himself into the ruck and into the action, comes to the ground level, Great contest at ground level though. Ball comes out to McGarry, his kick is smothered. And it dribbles off the boot there of Glyus for another behind. So two behinds and yet the score is Brighton. Six minutes down first term. He's one of those players who have a high number on. We've got Glorious in the 50, Force the 52, Jordan the 60. And as we mentioned pre-game, no Bo McRae and a couple of players in their best 18. Unable to suit up for Sacred Heart, which would definitely give Brighton pause for confidence as O'Loughlin Johncock gets out of jail, slipped over. He was very lucky there. Absolutely gone. Rushing in too fast. Lowby caught him high. So O'Loughlin Johncock takes the benefit of the whistle, moves it down, turns it straight over. A bit of football karma. As Tap takes it uncontested in the end, just ahead. Of Cigar, who entered the game with a great defensive punch early, and now it's in the teammates' hands. Back at half back, Loy. Just over the head of Forster. He's come into the side this afternoon, experience at the Southern Eagles on York Peninsula. But meanwhile, coming over the back and fist miss from Miller. Chases after it nicely. Tap is there and lives up to his namesake, but sent it straight to an opponent. Inside 50, Miller. All by himself, turned around, didn't have the footy. Wellsby quickly on the scene, lost oh, his feet, oh, did a oh. bit of a dance, and snapped truly. Tommy Wellsby left him dazed and puts the first of the day on the board as Bryden get off to a flyer. One goal, six. Shock two behinds. Seven and a half gone. Sportal scoreboard. So that's an ORTC goal of the week there. That was absolutely magnificent from Wellsby. Sold plenty of eye candy. Twisted a few ankles and bang, bang, bang. Brighton strike first. A great goal there by Wellsby. And what a start to Brighton with pretty limited opportunities inside their forward 50 thus far. Leading goal kicker on the season, Wellsby, 25 to his name now. Chasing down the division's finest in Karkiro, who's got 28. And just above him, you've got Davis and Brazel from Prince Alfred with 39, 36 apiece. It's a pretty deadly duo from PAC with Brazel coming in um, after starting the season in North Adelaide. There's a free kick in the middle of the ground to Otis Carthy, the captain of Brighton, who's had his injury concerns this year. Fortunately, he's kicked it down towards uh, Sanderson, can't take the mark. Ball comes to ground, comes out there to Miller. He's kicked smothered, so Sacred Heart should clear from here. Not much on down the line. And a beautiful mark and a Bianco contender there from Karkiro. Didn't take his eyes off it. Jeez, he plays well above his height, Karkiro. He's not a traditional Sonar Ford type, but he's playing on the flank this afternoon. Dangerous kick. And, well, taken in the end. And he trips over there as Henley McCall plays on now. Nice little sidestep, goes towards Carlotto. The big man flies. Over the top there was uh, Siegel, couldn't take the mark. They've got some crummers at ground level. Need to be smart with it. Taken down there is Carlotto, and he should get done for holding the ball, but the umpire gives him the benefit of the doubt and says, I'll throw it up. So Nicholas Jordan playing up forward there and just laying off Carlotto. 
So the third man's up the back there. Ball coming to ground. O'Loughlin almost threw it out. Ball comes out. Looking pretty deadly there. Ball comes over the top and a strong mark there to Jordan. Called play on. Must have been a touch ball because he did everything there right and we'll get that kick out of the fence. And Bright and the gone and the flash up towards the wing. Simon's had his arms taken out. Nicholas Jordan into the side this week. Unlucky to be called to play on, but Simons finds a target. It's Karkiro. 28 goals in the season and one thing on his mind here. I don't know if he's going to make the distance from there. It's a tough kick even though he's just outside the paint. But a tough kick for a right footer. He'll kick from just on 50. Man on the mark stands at 48. Oh, Got the goals on his mind. He said sail for home. But Brighton come back. A Lachlan Jonkoff with a pat on the back for his teammate Lloyd. The one club player. All the way through from juniors, Jack Loy. So four points on the scoreboard for Sacred Heart. Not their best start with four behinds, but I'm sure they'll even the ledger as the game progresses. And the confidence of Sacred Heart, you saw it on display with that kick from Karkiro minutes ago on the wing. Biting off that 45 in the middle. It was almost turned over, but the confidence this team has to really go with their first instinct is on full display early. A great kick there from the full back position from Jack Plenty. Got plenty on it. It's at the halfway uh, on the far side of True Centre Wing here at Glenelg Oval. Ball comes out of that clearance. No one really at the top of the 50 there for Sacred Heart, so it's an open paddock. One for the fast runners. Ball comes out towards the wing now. And uh, we've got a number change, so we've got a player that wasn't in the starting lineup. We got the call that there was all clear right to play. So uh, there'll be a ball up at centre wing. No need for the push in the back there, Broadbent. And I think he's given away the free kick for a lack of discipline. Lowby plays on immediately. So Blake McDonald was at number 11. Comes out of that far side to uh, Glouius. Glouius goes inside 50 and finds Nicholas Jordan, who should have been paid the mark only moments earlier. He's going to have to kick from outside the arc here. And take his best, best shot on goal. So Nicholas Jordan on the right side for a right footer. See something on short. And it goes over his teammate's head and lands on the chest of a direct opponent. So good kick there to Francis. So we've got a in. We'll have a player who's missing from the original lineup. We'll bring you that as soon as we get info. And a lovely mark taken in front of his opponent, Wellsby. Who has the first goal on the board, beaten to it there by Tappy. Gets a nice little one-handed Inspector Gadget type number from Forced Up. Your Peninsula product in a Foss Camden Jr. He handballs on quickly and they're gone in a, a blink of an eye. And pressure coming in from Wellsby. Defensive work is lovely at the back, Kyle Otto. You're not going to mark many from his starting position. And starting in front at the right spot, Draper. At full back, it's McGarry, excuse me, in the blue boots. Won't forget his name again. Boots it out and flying for it was Carthy. Captain went up, didn't come down with the footy. Inside 50 again. This time, quarter of the back, Kyle Otto. It's an action replay. McGarry got there, not for the mark this time, but did well. Sport it out and the boundary umpire will go to work. It's a good contest here from both players, both holding on. I think that's why the umpire just left his whistle alone. 13 played, Sportal scoreboard sees Bryden with a slender advantage. One goal, straight six, handball, Boyle. Under pressure and taken without it. He initially then picked it up and dropped it. So the umpire hot on those early. And dispossessed, Sammy Laub. It's at fullback again, or just a bit closer to the defensive 50 line with a paint. Meets the boundary and a strong pack mark. He went up and made it his long sleeves. Jakey Tarker has added quite a bit to this Brighton lineup since he's joined the mid season. Has that experience in the VFL with Geelong. And he's come back home to propel Brighton towards a finals charge. Did see a game earlier in the year. Tarker's first game was a four goal, best on ground performance. So Loves the long sleeves, doesn't he? It isn't actually Tucker. Tucker's got the short sleeves on. There you go. Yeah, so I think that's Carthy that's pushed forward there. Ball comes out of this contest. 
Plenty of numbers there for Brighton. Playing on quickly there was uh, Higgins. They get a kick inside 50, goes to the hot spot. Ball comes over the back. Should clear from here and they decide to rush it through for a minor score. So seven plays four. 13, 14 and a half nine on the sport of the scoreboard. There is Carthy in the long sleeve. Spot on that. It's a long way away from our commentary <laughs> position up here, but uh, it's a fine day. So need, let's... Some, need some spec savers from here. I'll give you the strong tip. Limit those mistakes from now on, Jack. Note to self. So Sacred Heart just uh, maintaining position as they slowly get it outside their defensive 50. Wonderful crowd in at Strata Armour Over. It uh, almost feels like an SANFL match here. There's the grandstands filling up nicely, and if you're in the area, what better reason to spend your Saturday afternoon with a match of local footy? You can park up, wander in. It should be a cracker. Only like, early. Close like game. The SANFL, 20 bucks to get into the venue. It's Indeed. Uh, free for free today. Ball oh. comes over the back. Jordan in pursuit. Good work there. They get it to Carlotto at half forward. Not much on. He's going to have to hold the ball up. He does. He's got a runner on. Decides to ignore that option. Goes the deeper option. In a one on two in the end. They need that pressure at ground level. They've lacked it slightly at the ground level so far. Ball comes out to McAuliffe. Settles. 30 out. Bang! And they're on the board. So Sacred Heart, they've had to wait their time. Almost 16 minutes down to get that first goal. And... Beautiful work there by McCullough. Just had the composure that he required. And they've hit the scoreboard for the first time in the goal column. And one for 10. Plays 1-1-7. Interesting first 16 minutes of this class, Jack. He straightened up nicely there, McCullough, didn't he? Had plenty of time, assessed what was around him. Did the assessing early before he took possession. Knew he had time to get onto his right boot. Didn't have to rush it. And if you're Kyle Otto, it's a gay man to ignore... A wide open Clayton Simons as he comes straight past you, but he knew something we didn't. He knew his mosquito fleet of small forwards were ready to pounce in case that forward 50 ball came to ground. And McAuliffe, right spot, right time, adds a goal to the scoreboard and Sacred Heart on the board. Making charge now. Strong tackle coming out, didn't have it upset. Might see a free kick in the AFL for descent. Umpire lets them play. And a beautiful lead and coming out to meter on his chest. Straight down the leading lane and doing beautifully was Aaron Warner. 50 out directly in front. He'll go back for Bryden second and the immediate answer. He's got a beautiful left peg, Aaron Warner, and he has got the journey here. So he does also have the, the aid of a 15 knot win behind him. Slightly going to the left goal post. So he's backed all the way to the cricket pitch. It's going to take a straight kick as the man on the mark sprints towards him and did well, up he goes! Wellsby, but perhaps a bit too early, umpire says you touched the ball, it wasn't unrealistic and we'll throw it in. Jeez, that was a huge leap there by Tarka. He's, um, loves the jumping jack approach, but uh, not on that occasion. You're not going to miss him. At least when he we've goes got some up. people around the boundary line to retrieve the ball, unlike when you play at Karen Rolt Noble. Back to you, Jack. That's the beauty of playing in a Sandful venue. Strata Armour, Glenelg Oval. As the ball is hurriedly cleared with no real direction, and it's going to find a Brighton man on the edge of 50 where the boundary meets the paint. He's going to be too far out to score. Only thing missing here at Strata Armour is a big replay screen. He puts it up, smart kick, but no one coming out to meet it. You've got a gamble and the kick going across the face. They've just misread the width of the ground, I thought initially, but Clayton Simons, the kick was spot on in the end. He wastes no time and a sprinting laub of the Sam variety. Kicks it down towards the wing and with no real intent, plenty settles for a boundary throw in. Quick check of the sport or scoreboard. 18 and a half going, ticking towards 19. Shocks 1 4 10, Bryden 1 1 7. This game, which promised so much, is delivering so far. So Noble and Draper recommence. Almost a tap to his own self there was Noble. Strong tap at ground level. Jeez, he's got some strength there, Otis Carthy. Nice tackle from Laub. Just held him up nicely. Reset. So Noble gets the tap down. 
Russell. Oh, potato at the moment. Good work there by Warner. Gets it out to Francis. He's Francis off. takes them on. Ball needs to sit up nicely. He's almost tackled by four players. There's a spare at the top in Francis. Francis goes inside 50. Wayward looking king. He's got Tarker on. Beautiful mark. Jakey Tarker using some strength there and plenty of forward craft. And just pushed off his opponent at the pivotal moment. And that all came from the sprint of Harrison Boyle. Just put the afterburners on, took off on the wing. So the Francis brothers doing some damage inside 50 and Parker finishes off and kicks his first. So the former Geelong product is uh, looking like a live wire up for, which is excellent to see. So that was Harrison Boyle. So Harrison Boyle. Beautiful sprint on the wing from Boyle and it led down towards Sorry, that yes. mark and you were spot on Matt Tarker just using all his experience and just doing the work early and reaping the rewards that's why he was listed by Geelong out of Encounter Bay after beginning his career in fine style and spent a couple of years at South Adelaide as well. And well Apologies to Harrison Boyle I did have two Jack Francis on my shame sheet. So that's his 19th that. goal of the season I'm sure Jack Francis wouldn't argue with that. And for Brighton, he's been that good. If you watched a few of their games this year, you'd swear there was two of them. Kyle Otto loads up from 45. The kicks one he'd probably not think of in his dreams, but it works out nicely. And there's the debutant this afternoon, Jordan. Couldn't miss from here. Nicholas Jordan in the 60. He leans back, puts it through, and the ball... Sails over the goal umpire's hat, and if you talk about an immediate answer, that's one for you. Nicholas Jordan on the board in his first game of the season for Shock, and they close that gap right back up. He's looked particularly dangerous so far, Jordan, in his debut game. A um, couple of handy marks and almost paid one that was a touch ball right near the goal line, so he's had a terrific start to his debut game. Colotto with a bit of a miscue kick, but they still had that play in the right position at the right time. Nicholas Jordan, a great story. He started the season in the, in the uh, C grade for shock in round two and round three. Made his way into the reserves team and now he's getting his senior call up. So a good footy story in this team, destined for a top three finish. Certainly is. Colotto gets that left paw on, goes towards O'Loughlin. Hand passes before mm. he gets taken down. Some good work there. Ball comes to ground to Rankin. Can't pick it up. Smother ball comes out the back to Draper. Bit of a cake of soap for the big man. Couldn't pick it up. Ball gets pushed over the top. Now they've gone over the top here. They've got a couple of runners. Can they hold on? Good work there by Karkuro. Looking for that runner. Gets it off to Moore. Moore goes inside 50 to Jordan. Can he kick two in a minute? Good work there. Ground level by Sigal. And Sigal rebounds outside of his defensive 50 and looking for the big man in Draper. Big man still can't pick it up. Got time to recover. Gets onto his boot just in the right amount of time. Ball goes rallying inside the 450. Wellsby out the back, should stroll in and goes bang. So they've gone case to case off the back of Siegel. And Draper just had that extra inch of time on his hands. And Wellsby does the damage for his second goal. It's on the Sporter scoreboard. Almost 23 minutes down. It's Brighton 3-1-19. Shocks 2 4 16. Great game. Great uh, start. After a real tight start, this game has opened up. We've got a bit of a goal fest in the past five or six minutes. Sacred Heart be pretty happy having kept Prince Alfred to six goals, Old Ignatians to two goals, Port District one goal in round 12, and Bryden have put three in them already in the first quarter. So some tightening up defensively to be done for Alex Carlotto and company. The one thing about having a debutant inside forward 50. With Nicholas Jordan, he presents well for goals, but let that ball speed out a bit too easily with no pressure. And Bryden went end to end. They've got some speedy runners. Simon's on the wing, a nice little nibbling kick, and he finds his target, McDermott, towards forward 50, where Karkiro like a bit of a butter mouse, but he couldn't get himself out of the cream. And caught in a lovely tackle. Just needed to move that on with the first option, Karkiro. Got a bit himself in a pickle and ran out of options quickly. Bryden looked to move it. One thing they've done beautifully well all season is move that footy. Miller on the outer wing. Nothing he likes short. Loads up and coming up and beautiful leap at the back by Bastion. And they're over the back. 
Ball spills out of contact and taken down. Strong tackle more just where they needed him because over the back end waiting for it was Wellsby. Already got two. A real strong start. Wellsby with two, Tarka with the other. Brighton up by three. Looking to put a gap between themselves and Shock early. 24 and a half played, quarter time imminence. So if we're just outside the paint here, then the ball will be thrown right on the 50 metre line. Clotto machines the front position, double handed pull down. And we'll have a throw up right on the 50 metre arc. Just looking at Bryden, they're really throwing a Lachlan Johncock everywhere. He was at half back on the ball and, and now he's pushed forward. Comes out to Bastion. Could have been a free kick for hanging on too long. All holding the ball. Take your pick. And now the up ones even it up and he has given that free kick for holding the ball. You so, really do see the shock structure up high here where we are, where they do spread wide. Simons is the instigator. He tells his men, especially here, you've got Dewhurst who might end up getting it as they switch to push wide, give them that option. And he might be the reward and the recipient. Here he is. Oh, not quite. And coming up for, before it was Brinkworth who dribbled it out of bounds. But the instigator there was Clayton Simons, leading from the front, pointing where he wants his teammates to have that structure up when they have possession of the ball. They do rely on that uh, player coaching on the field, and there's a number of leaders, including Carlotto, who is the official player coach. But we'll mention there, Jack, who worked there by Carlotto, getting the ball down. Oh, some strong tackling. It should have been a free kick. And it is. So can the Shocks get a late one here in the first turn? Both coaches will be reasonably happy with their squadron thus far. Ball comes beautiful mark at the back, not paid and not taken. And McGarry just loves going for the leap as a tall defender. Plenty in. German Seagal locking up in that double tackle. Mm, so second man up, which is O'Loughlin. Only as far as Simon. Simon gets a quick kick onto his boot. And strong mark at the back. There's McGarry not paid. Ball comes towards Ethan Moore. Just needs to slot it through. Guys hides the hand pass off to Kakuro. Almost takes the ump goal ump by his head off. And bada bing, bada boom. Third one on the ball there for Sacred Heart. And they hit the lead. So deep into the final uh, time on in this first term. And a great goal there by Sacred Heart. Good team goal in the end. And they slot through their third. They have a three-point lead, 22 to 19 on the Sportal scoreboard, Jack. Just takes that one mistake, doesn't it? Just to take your eye off the ball for a split second. Unlucky from McGarry not to hold on. He perhaps was thinking about his kick or handball after he had taken the initial mark and just lost grip of the Sharon. And if you lose possession inside your defensive 50 against Sacred Heart, it's good night, Nurse. Yeah, good night, Irene. They hunt so well inside forward 50, they're always there. And over the top, Kakiro just couldn't help himself. Strolled into an open goal and said, thank you very much. He'll do it all again, Chris Rush. In the middle of the ground, throws it up alongside umpires Marek Carls and Matty Harris. As the siren sounds for quarter time and entertaining we thought it would be and entertaining it was. A defensive masterclass in the first 10 minutes. The game opened up slightly with goals at either end and little mistakes being punished. But if you hang on to that footy, you can capitalise easily. Plenty of width here at Stratarama Oval at Glenelg. If you're in the area, well, a three-point game at quarter time. Come on down, free entry, Adelaide Footy League action. But if you're at home on filming footy, then stay tuned. We'll bring you up to date with the games around the division. After this, it's quarter time. Shocks 3 4 22, Brighton 3 1 19. Shocks by three on filming footy. Stop it. Yeah.
Are you good? <clears throat> and you want to get it out? Whenever yeah. you're ready, mate. You want to you have time to go around the ground? Oh, yeah, no. What are you looking at there? Is that your screen on your phone? Oh, it's in the Dream Team stats. <laughs> what a first quarter we retreated to. And let's hope the next three will be just as good. A fantastic afternoon, Stratorama. Glenelg Oval, come on down, join us. Or well, stay tuned right here on Filming Footy as the initial clearance of this first quarter goes the way of Draper on the wing. Sprinting out of trouble and taken down afterwards, but the mark taken by Brooks, moves it on. Straight in the umpire's area. Ball was touched, reading it nicely. Kylotto, like a thief in the night, picked it up. Snapped it truly towards goal and going down over at Jordan. Goal in the first quarter. First game of senior footy. Picked up and snapped nicely in the first goal within the space of a minute. And the man who's always on the scene and knows exactly where the goals are, Karkiro, in a dangerous mood, adds his second of the day. Shocks move along to 4 4 28. Open up that lead slightly to nine points. Brighton 3 1 19. Not even a minute played. Quarter two, Jack Moore, Matt Gale. Great call there, Jack, and I think Karkuro's licking his lips at a potential bag of five today. He's um, looking very ominous up forward. So back to the middle, and a brilliant start there. So Noble up against Draper. Noble gets the tap down. Umpire's found a free kick. Don't know where that came from, but Nigel Osborne is the recipient. Season campaigner. They'd probably be leading their best and fairest. Nice kick inside uh, centre square there. Comes out towards O'Connell, uh, McDonald. Geez, Wellsby ran the wrong way and sort of found himself in an awkward position in the contest. Good work there by Sanderson. All oh, smashed in that contest was Lovelock. Ball comes out. There's a spare man out the back and uh, Jakey Tarker can't pick it up. Good work there and they clear it out through Sanderson. Oh. Nice contest by Collado, but it's a bit of forward contact and he's found a push there. I don't know how, but that wasn't his intention. Got lucky there. The two Brighton defenders didn't do much chatting amongst themselves and shocks were off for the races if that ball was out the back. Yeah. Umpire bails him out. He certainly did. So Sigal on the wing, tumble, look, pump looking kick, an ugly looking tumble punt, of, mind you. Ball comes out the side here, trying to get it out to the far side. Some strong work there by Osborne. His ball should go through for a minor score, and it does on the sport of scoreboard. It is 4-4. Four, four. So they've given them um, shocks an extra point there. So they've just really realised that. And it's an eight-point margin on the sport of scoreboard. Two and a half gone, second turn. Defensive pressure amped up. Early stages of the second quarter. Shocks would expect to secure a victory here to push towards the top of the table. Colotto comes through, battering Ram style. Hands off, handball to Moore. And they're out everywhere now, Sacred Heart. Easy lead, easy hit up. Karkiro takes the mark. And he spins around quickly. Wants to be unselfish. 50 out would have been the kick for goal. Bryden come away with it. Below his knees, little half volley. Carthy picked it up, wearing the captain's armbands. Not physically, but... Imagine that in your mind, taking down over it and would have been holding the ball. Umpire was circling a Lachlan Johncock laid a brilliant tackle. It's come the way of Carthy, who's continued his push up the ground. Finds that man again, but the person he handballed to was out of bounds, and that's going to mean a free kick, I believe, to Sacred Heart, is it? Because if he was out of bounds and it was a handball, surely it's last possession, but the umpire has decided, no, he's just tiptoed back over that boundary line so directly in the middle of the ground balls flung over the boundary umpire's head and away they go now nice little body work just ushering jordan under the ball as it came his way no prior strong tackle ball up 40 out from the shock goal as they push to extend the eight point lead they've currently got definitely opened up more in this second term jack we'll bring you some update scores from around the grounds Next stoppage in play, and G. Kylotto was up to pressure. It looks as though he's had a bit to say at quarter time, and he's leading from the front in this second turn. So Kylotto 
Trying to get that left paw on it. Gets a decent thump on this one. Ball comes to ground. Strong tackling by Moore. Comes out towards Lovelock. Sneaky little kick around the corner. Jeez, it almost got through. And we touch right on the line. So a rush behind. And the margin back out to nine points. Just waiting for the scoreboard to be updated. Just took a lucky bounce off under the Bryden defender's legs, that ball, and trickled through for a point. Otherwise, Jordan was right there for a, a tap-through goal. Good work there by Miller. He's a long way up the ground, but it comes out the back to Simons. Usually a steadying kick, but it's only landed on the chest of Warner. Plays on it immediately. Goes out very, very wide, looking for broad bent. He's got his captain over the top, so he goes to Carthy. Carthy on his opposite leg, goes inside 50. Almost a falcon on the head of uh, Harrison Boyle and punched out of play. Sebi Kerris getting back with the fist there and one of their top three possession getters, not just interested in getting the footy, really keen to do the dirty stuff as well. Great to see Kerris back out there because he was um, limping off the ground only early stages of that first term. Some good work there by Lovelock. He has got the free kick. And just a bit of overcommitment there from Ty Murphy, who's one of their better players this season as well. So Lovelock, darting low ball. Can't try to keep it in. And it comes off the hands of Lowby. So, uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry if there's any technical difficulties. So right on the far side, centre wing. Start by both teams. I'm sure Coach Brett Backwell will be pretty happy with his charges. Although they'll need to uh, try and get this win this afternoon if they're going to make the top five. So Noble up against Draper. Noble gets the tap. Probably the in the top two best ruckman in the league at the moment for the team of the year, along with big. Big buckets out there at Tea Tree Gully. So he's thrown out of the contest there was Osborne. Yeah, well umpired. Just and taken well out umpired. of it behind and the plate. Smart footballer Osborne to uh, recognise he's about to get tackled and he'll get the free kick at left half back. He put a bit of mayonnaise on it, just threw the hands out, made sure the umpire saw it. Still held. He's got an injured player for shock on the boundary. Sammy Laub, a bit of a limp up. So we'll keep an eye on that, keep you updated. Bryden, Hubbard and Shock have come out the better team in this second term. Bryden looked to steady and close inside their forward half. Handball, kick, nice little option at the back, but it finds Broadbent who handballs. Comes the way by Lachlan Johncock, who's been arguably Bryden's best. He's popped up in all parts of the field. Need a goal here, Bryden. Shock hold a seven-point lead, seven and a half gone. Goal here just to settle the nerves in this second quarter. Real pressure around the footy. It comes out to what should be a bright and two on one, Ooh. but Carthy pushed the opponent down and made it a two on none. And the Bombers look to do that and push it forward. But coming across nicely was Gluyas. Real glue guy back there. He's taken down, almost tripped. Umpire decides no, you put yourself in your own pickle. And coming out of stoppage and looking for a short target more over his head. Shot clear and coming up the ground to meet it. Really nice signs from the debutant, Jordan. We mentioned earlier, start of the season in C grade. Pushed his way through reserves and finds himself here on a Saturday afternoon. His kick inside the middle of the ground found Rankin, who was screaming for it initially. He was taken down the way of Glueus. It's going back and the ball was going to race the Bryden defenders through as it is. Four on one back there, an easy short kick to clear. They get the switch on, and they're on here, they're off to the races, has a bounce, goes long down the line here, and geez, it's a touch and go, I think the umpire's allowed that to go in, so Tom Dixon takes the ball at ankle level, moving the ball inside 50, there's Finlay Bennett, so Bennett gets it inside 50, ball comes towards the dangerous Wellsby. Oh. Gives it out there to Harrison Boyle. His kick is smothered. Willsby goes back for another look. They should clear through Kerrish. So they go straight down the guts here. Good work there by uh, McDermott. McDermott gets it out wider. Bombers have three on none. Forward of the ball here for shock. So Kakuro's already kicked two. Looking very dangerous. Oh, great tackle. 
Magnificent tackle and it is paid hole in the ball. You just love that from your midfield unit when you've got coverage. They had Kailotto chasing back and covering three Bryden defenders. But the ball wasn't even allowed to get down there. Outnumbered around the footy but still held it up and won a free kick. They'll be outnumbered forward of the ball now. As the defensive unit are holding an extra man behind the plate. So the smart thing is to hold it up and that's exactly what they do. In the Wellsby direction he comes out. He's been a shining beacon of light up forward. The umpire's found a free and one for Sacred Heart to take and relieve. Smart coaching from Backwell. Other coaches would let the game play out and stick an extra number behind the ball after the problem was well and truly exposed. But he's done it at the first sign of caution. As Kailotto battles on back there, he's got McGarry and Plenty to deal with. Shock have it now, though. It's going to be the first test of that new defensive setup. For the Bombers, Kailotto comes out to meet it, puts the Jukes up. And good luck spoiling it when his arms are fully extended. Takes the mark, 40 out, slight angle. Geez, what great footy smarts he had there. McGarry's one of the best defenders in the league and he just was arms and, arms and lengths above him there and he couldn't get any purchase on those Jukes. So great, great kick inside 450. And Kailotto shouldn't have any issues here from uh, just inside the paint, Jack. Out of the corner of his eye, just saw Bennett, the loose man, or plenty it was, wander away from his space. And he sprinted out and demanded the footy. But just inaccurate, fades away across the face. Just lacked a bit of purchase there, Colotto, on that kick and um, didn't kick through the ball, even though he made the distance. Sportal scoreboard 4 5 29, lead of eight points. Shocker pressing. For a larger advantage, Bryden 3-3-21, Tap will send it right back inside forward 50. And coming across the face of the pack. That's a mark of the day, contender. And he's paid the price for it. Stay down afterwards. Gee, Sigal did some damage. Almost went down like nine pins there. Including the captain, Carthy. Sigal took the mark. You're spot on, Matty Gale. Carthy wore the brunt. He's back up. The runner's out to him, he pushes him away, he says, I'm good. I've got plenty of work to do. Certainly does, Colotto gets the tap down. Well held up in the tackle. And good work there by Osborne, who uh, was reasonably quiet in the first term, but his second term's been pretty impressive. There he is at the bottom of the pack there again. McAuliffe gets an awkward kick as he's about to be tackled. Comes out the back towards Jordan. Been impressive in his debut game. Mm. And we'll have a throw in. About so, 25 from home, Jack. A bit of a chess match at the moment, isn't it? Because I think Brent Backwell jumped first by just pushing a couple of spare defenders behind the ball. And the domino effect means that Shock have one or two behind the footy themselves. So we'll see how this plays out. Ball comes towards Chester Forster. He's been taken high, the big Chester. And uh, he'll have a free kick. Jeez, he's been wiped out there. It's going to take a moment of brilliance and just a bit of a, a quick thinking action for either side to knock up their next goal with those loose defenders at either end. So, so this Chester might Forster be, here, he, he looked uh, like he's meant to go off the ground. He's going to take his kick and perhaps then be assessed. And, well, we've seen a few headlines in recent weeks, haven't we? So Kerrish runs inside, forward 50, left boot, bang! And a beautiful work there by Seb Kerrish. But the goal goes down to big Chester Forster, who did a magnificent work there getting that free kick. He's gone off for some assessment on the bench there for his high tackle. But Seb Kerrish, give him an inch. He'll take a mile every time. hi ho Jackson Moore. We were just mentioning the fact that it's going to take a little bit of brilliance, a bit of individual brilliance from somebody from either side just to break the deadlock as both coaches had pushed a spare number behind the ball and that man said Kerish if you need a magic man you pick up the phone and you dial his number because on the scene just caught whoever he was on for Brighton napping loaded up from 40 and a bit of distance and separation now 16 point gap midway through second term 
Shock threatening to blow this one wide open. And coming out to meet it, he turned on a five cent piece. And the kick was just not measured precisely from Brooks. Did the first bit well. Pressure valve release, Brighton. Plenty now. Will that force a bit of a switch from the coach's box for the Bombers? Does Backwell stick with that loose man? Or does he push even numbers, look to close the gap? Bit of a, a stuttering run up. He missed the ball completely. No ball, but it fell in his teammates' hands. McDermott towards the edge of 50. Lovelock first there, reading it nicely. Sees the goals. He wants himself a big one. And he takes home a six-pointer. She's a fantastic there by Lovelock. Just uh, had the ball for about half a second. Knew he was uh, free as a bird and he went, bada bing, bada boom, I'm going to have some of that. And he certainly did and got a fair purchase on it with the aid of this um, two of the three goal breeze that they've got. Shock out to a 22 goal uh, margin. It's been a huge uh, few minutes their way. And good sides will punish it when they do. And they have, certainly have here. And I tell you what, Bright looks a bit shell-shocked, Jack. They've only added one point to their quarter time score whereas uh, Shock have added three goals too Sticking with that loose man behind the ball where Lachlan Johncock on the edge of the square about to run in inside forward 50 though it's all one on one so we'll see what slight coaching movement but the handball out of space was brilliant Carlotto found Lovelock he's a man possessed after that last goal he is flying on confidence and riding himself a magic carpet, but the carpet right end swiftly taken down. Not before the kick was accurately put in the lap of McDonald. Brighton need to take a few deep breaths. Really entered quarter time, only down by three. And looking like a real threat to steal this win. A three-way tie. The fifth spot between themselves, Broadview and Tea Tree Gully will bring you some update scores from their matches very shortly. With three weeks left of this regular season, every win is crucial. Simons on the lazy Susan, but he spun himself into trouble. He's tripped up. And umpire Rash is not in a very generous mood. Considered himself very unlucky there, Simon. I thought he deserved a, a ball up at least because um, he wasn't really trying to lock that in. But rules are rules. So Carthy kicks down his half forward flank looking for Draper. Can't take the mark. Ball comes out towards O'Loughlin, struggling to pick it up. McDermott's uh, slung in the tackle. And she's packs on the mill here at the grandstand wink at Strata Rama Oval. She's been a brilliant spectacle so far. And. Uh, Shock's just had a really important five minutes there. Halfway through this second term, it's a 22 point margin. McDermott doing some great work at ground level. Good slap on there from O'Loughlin. Almost come off the boot of uh, Chester Forster there. Clearance but, uh, is getting really out of control, Sacred Heart. I've had first handball, first touch for about the past five or six ball ups and boundary throw ins, a real area of need and urgency attention for Bryden right now. Jeez, Colotto not very happy with the attention he got from Draper, but we're back with the action with Boyle. Boyle goes inside 50, looking for Tarka. Can't take the mark. Still in the contest, Tarka. If he wants to get back a month, it taps it on. I think there's a free kick, and it's in the back there. And the recipient is Cooper Brinkworth. Oh, he's giving away the 25. So, not really sure what exactly happened there but uh, well as we just hung on a bit too long in that initial tackle we were talking about clearance harrison boyle with that clearance for bride and the ball initially inside 50 his home oval he played 18s reserves and league footy for glenelg here so he knows the turf and he stood up with a lovely clearance but it wasn't to be for bryden but a bright spark to watch so he goes down down the line towards colotto ball goes over his head they do have time, but it's a one on three. She's going to have to work hard to get rid of that. He certainly does. Comes over back to uh, over top to lock. I've got one on the middle in Harrison Boyle. Boyle goes to Osborne. Osborne inside 50. Sanderson leading all comers here. Ball comes to ground. Great work there by Miller. Opportunist. Wellsby plays for the free kick and gets it. Intelligent. So smart football there by Wellsby. 
and good forward craft to know that he was about to get hit there with the tackle and Kerrish slightly overcommitted. And Wellsby will line up for his third and a much needed one as this game is getting ahead of uh, getting away from Brighton as we speak. And they need a real settler. Having his best year, Wellsby, 14 goals last season. He's up to 29, oh, 30 indeed with a couple already today this season. So Wellsby, 30, he's just pulled it to the left. Jeez, that's an opportunity rude there because they really needed that goal. Look at the sportal score, but it's 6 6, plays 3 3. 20 minutes down, second term, Jack. This quarter's just about flowing by if you're a Sacred Heart supporter. You'd be well and truly happy with the baking as it's coming out of the oven. As we approach half time, it's looking crisp and fresh. But the bombers have burnt their batch. 21 point gap. It was three at quarter time. They desperately need a goal, and that's not going to do them any favours. Drifts out of bounds. It's a bit of a waste there from Wilsby because the uh, he was actually had the free kick behind that line and ended up kicking it on the full to Miller. Just hasn't worked. It's just come out of the joint. Uh, forward 50 entries. A couple of clearances, but Sacred Heart have been well stocked. When they go forward themselves, the individual brilliance has been on full display. Mark, half back. He looks to push it down the wing, does Noble. Really hard, and up he goes. Just couldn't bring it down in the end. Cigar went up, he put up the jukes. His on-ball mosquito fleet unit go to work. It's flurry of handballs, Draper. Kicks to an out number though, and the man who sent it down there originally has the action replay. Noble takes it. A pretty regulation mark. So good contest by the two ponytails. She's Noble's got his up in the uh, headband. Went there on the 45 to McDermott. Real nice kick. It opens up a lot of options now for Shaw. Certainly does. He's got 45s on everywhere. And they're queuing up again. Ball comes out wide. Does it stay in play? It does. Nice mark in the end there by Sammy Lowby, who's recovered. Beautiful kick to Colotto on the 45. He's got Kerish running through the middle of the strata armor oval. The damaging left foot, unfortunately, this isn't his best kick, and it lands on the chest of Sigal, who quickly plays on to McGarry. So McGarry goes out wide on a one-on-two. Not sure, sure that was the right option going to Tarka. Plenty of numbers behind there. Sanderson with a raking right-hand hand pass, keeping it in. Well, there was Henry McAuliffe. He's had a fantastic first half, but McGarry... Oh, sorry. It's actually Draper, the Ruckman, who cues in and takes the mark at the pivotal time. They've got three or four full to the footy manned up by one or two on that last forward full way for, for Bryson. Just didn't fall their way over the back. Shot cleared it forward, it was turned over. But we saw a couple of minutes ago a bit of a training drill, that 45, that zigzag footy from Shock. And it just fell apart with a slip to Karkuro as he comes to the bench for a much needed rest. And if you're bright and you see Karkiro coming off and you're fist pumping and you see Clayton Simons run straight back on to replace him and your head goes into your hands. A man of his quality replacing an equally able player. Wellsby got himself into a bit of trouble. He's not happy. Umpire says you threw that and he said, no, I've got a fist to it, Matty Harris. Very hard to see that being a throw, but obviously the umpire's in a better position than us, Jack. He was lucky to escape the initial tackle when he ran himself into further damage. We tick towards 24 minutes and Shock looking to put a bit more damage on the place it matters, the scoreboard. They fly, comes towards the back, Clayton Simons rejuvenated and fresh after a break on the bench. Wrapping his arms around the direct opponent. Actually looked like Warner hand passed that one out of bounds, but the umpire obviously was obscured from the action. As the coaches look to prepare their half-time team talks, it'll be slightly different to quarter time. The Kyle Otto team talk has worked an absolute wonder in this second quarter. They've held Brighton goalless. Two to Wellsby and one to Tarka. Tarka's been pretty invisible, as has the forward six for Brighton. Ground level, McAuliffe. Ingenuitive thinking and improvisation, but it just spills out. Was it touched? Looks like the umpires awarded a free kick for a last possession. Bit of a consultation. I think it's come off the foot of McGarry in the end. Who 
by accident, not by design. And decided to throw it in here as a bit of a last resort. Smart umpiring when you're not sure. Let's not give any advantage to any team. But as it is, locked in, deep inside shocks, forward 50. Smart hands, Carlotto and Simons were waiting and the pressure's released. That kick could have gone anywhere for the Bombers. Falls onto a black and yellow chest. Flying across the back, didn't take the footy and all of a sudden if it spills, they could be out. A firm tackle to hold it up, out of wing, 25 played. Shock by 21. The next goal, if it, we are to have one in this second term, could mean so much. It could be almost a five goal gap or it could bring the Bombers right back into calculations. Coming up to meet at Brooks, handballed off and flying up! Noble! The next goal looks like it might be in blue colours. Saw it and went up and got it. Great work there by Noble. Big leap from the big man. And uh, it was a, definitely a contender for the mark of the day for OOTC. A careful approach, lead at 21. Oh, the mark deserved more than that. 6 7 43. Brighton 3 3 21. Matt Gale, shocks could be out of sight this quarter if they had taken more of their opportunities in front of goal. Yeah, they certainly should have, and Brighton had a couple of opportunities that went missing at pivotal times of this second turn. So bull kicked in, plenty of distance on that kick. Goes towards Colotto from five deep, can't take the mark. Some great work at the ground level. It's been a, a quarter where the pressure meter's gone up for Sacred Heart, but the disposal efficiency's also gone up 20 to 30% as well. So Colotto doing plenty of damage in the ruck. He's just injected himself into the engine room and led from the front. And the big man is uh, up amongst the, the best players on the ground at the moment. Good tap again, using his right paw on this occasion. Comes to Wellsby. Could have been a dangerous tackle. And played for a free kick again, but uh, nothing doing. So, Soren is imminent. It's been a great display by Sacred Heart this second turn. Ball comes out the back there. Could have been tackled high with Chester Forster, and he is. So, Chesty, what can he do here? Plays on, looking for a hot spot. Goes in direction of Noble, goes over his head. And Gary tries to clean up. And the ball must have come off hands. Noble again. And no mark paid to Glueus at the top of the 50. And that rounds out the second, the first half here, Jack. What a magnificent first half it's been. Didn't both teams come out of the blocks in that first term with some defensive footy? Some real solid play behind the ball. And it was a tight game at quarter time. Three point lead to Shock and they blew that second quarter right open, extending out to a 6-7-43, 3-3-21, a 22 point gap at half time. Goal kickers for you, McAuliffe, Jordan, Karkiro's got himself two, Kerish and Lovelock for Brighton, Wellesby with two, Tarka the other. A quick whip around the grounds before we leave you for half time. And Goody Saints, 28, St. Peter's 9, a lead of 19 points at half time. Broadview, 19, Glenunga, 41, a lead of 22 for the Rams at half time in that one. And look away now if you're an old Ignatian supporter. Prince Alfred have piled on 14 first half goals and lead 91 to 17 heading into half time. At Park 9, but we're here at Stratarama over on filming footy. Tune in, come down, it's a beautiful afternoon. Bryden and Shock look to regroup and come out for the second half. It's Jack Moore alongside Matt Gale. Second half is coming up after this.
Oh, was that you in the in, in the toilet? <laughs> I heard it. Someone I sounded like you having a chat with someone. You know. Oh no, I saw him just outside, but mm -hmm. um, all good. I um, wanted to get a drink yeah. here. Oh, I know. I was considering getting some chips, but I was not. Nah. Surely it's better catered than a Santa Phil game, though. Just down, like probably just under where that. See where the lights are there? Yeah, That's where basically the it. lights are. Just Those outdoor the, decking. Yeah, yeah, just where the tiger banner is there. Underneath, at yeah, the bar, yeah. yeah. At the bar. All right, are we good? Uh, yeah, we're on. I think. The sun is out and the players are out and we're almost ready for kickoff in this second half. What a game it was in the first. It promised so much. Sacred Heart looking to push themselves into the top two. Prince Alfred doing an absolute number in old Ignatians. They might not get up to top spot this afternoon, but Sacred Heart looking to assert their dominance and definitely push towards finals. Division two last season, they've taken it all before them. Brighton tussling over that fifth spot with Tea Tree Gully and Broadview. Second half promises so much. Some bait Santa Rama oval here, or Strata Rama, mind you. No, no Santas here just yet. <laughs> We're a few months short, Jack, but no, it's been a terrific first half. And um, it's a pity the school ball is not a lot closer because there's a brilliant crowd here. Had to be a thousand down here at Glenelg Oval this afternoon. It's got a real feel about it. And hopefully the spectators have got a sensational second half to look forward to, Jack. They've piled in, and if you're still in the area, or if you're a little bit close, come on down, free entry, Adelaide Footy League hits a Sandful venue, and it's a massive success. There is the Sacred Heart First 18s game happening after this one too, so if you're in the mood for a bit of local footy, and come on down. We have a live score update from that Tea Tree Gully and Port District match at halftime. Port up by 24 points. So as it stands, all three teams going for fifth spot in losing positions. Ken Bryden, turn the tables. Here's Matt Gale. We went there by Noble, ended up tapping it down to himself. And that 15 play on, says the umpire. Comes out the back towards Osborne, some fancy footwork. Gets it on his boot and drills it inside 50. Look for a tall timber, can't find anyone. Comes out of Jake, Jakey Lark, uh, Tarka's hands. Putting it on the boot, there was Jared Miller. And trickles off hand for a minor score. So to get us underway in this third term, it's Brighton with the minor score, and it is 6 7 43. 3 4 22. Only 30 seconds down, third term. Just needed an extra half metre, did Miller. 22 goals on the season. Would have backed himself in from where he was, roughly 35 out. And before you know it, Sacred Heart is sprinting towards their goal, and they're inside 50. Just like that, not quite, on the cusp and punched out of bounds. Where the boundary meets the 50 as McAuliffe was sprinting back. Jeez, great punch there, poor Jakey, plenty. Plenty got met, him, back. met him solely, didn't he? A real ball and all punch. You love to see it. But just how quick Sacred Heart can transition, it's, uh, it's dangerous. The red lights are flashing for Brenny Backwell and his bride and coaching staff. As we mentioned, Broadview and Tea Tree Gully in losing positions at half time. So a real opportunity here for Brighton to push themselves clear and take a stranglehold on fifth position. To do that, they'll have to overcome a rampant Sacred Heart who took down Prince Alfred at Park Nine last week and are looking to do the same today. But no score, out of bounds in the fall. Really letting Brighton just have a seat at the table in this one. A bright and good enough. So Sigal to kick in with this free kick. From his left back pocket goes long down the line. Won't make the mark there will be Draper. Ball comes to McConnell, McDonnell. It's a good work by, uh, oh that's holding the ball every day of the week. And Osborne's been done like a dinner. And a great tackle there by Tommy McDermott. Had a couple of handball options and decided to ignore both, and that's what you get. So McDermott looking to get on his left foot. Gets a kick inside 50, won't make the target. And it's chimed off here by Blakey Higgins. A look out through McGarry. Comes down the line here, and good work there. Oh, geez, taken, had his legs taken out with Tommy Dixon. 
still trying to recover. So Jakey Tark on that far side of Glenel Goble. Doesn't find his target. In fact, he kicks it straight over his head. And just it's over the line there by Sanderson. Just about to mention Zachary Sanderson there. Loose man behind the footy and they kicked it straight down his throat. But lucky he couldn't take the mark and they can set up a stoppage about 50 out. So ball thrown in right on the 50 metre arc. Needing a goal is an understatement here for Brighton. Well cleared out there. This should trickle out and should come back with a bit of interest hopefully for the Brighton team. You can see a real clear instruction perhaps from Backwell, that last forward foray from Brighton. What got them the goals in the first quarter was quick ball movement. And they need to push on at all costs. Long kick inside forward 50. No mark taken. Ball comes to ground. Good work there by Osborne. Can he get a bit of assistance from the breeze? No, he can't. Ball's kept in play. Amazingly enough, and it's raced over the line there by Noble, who doesn't give away the free kick. So very evenly poised so far this term, but with a 21-point buffer is the Sacred Heart team. Good tap there by Noble. Look like their extra run was at the ground level. Kerish wax on his opposite foot. Still haven't got it out of that defensive 50. Pressure meter's definitely gone up for Brighton. For Brighton, good tackling there by Osborne and Wellsby, and we'll have a throw up. 35 from home for the Brighton team. Well, can Brighton pull out of their kit bag? They put the magic sack on the shoulder at half time, and they brought out that little up and under. That's not going anywhere fast. Going to drop just inside the boundary and roll over without being touched. And a bit of a hopty hop over the fence as Glouis has to fetch his own ball. And it's a rare part of the field here with no spectators. They are plentiful at Strata Rama Oval, Glenelg. SANFL home ground. And they are packed in tight for this Adelaide Footy League encounter between two of the strongest teams in the competition. Brighton on their day. Sacred Heart have proven week in, week out. McDermott. Short option and Lovelock decides initially to ignore him, then look a bit more central in 45, and he finds a leading man. Surveys the options and not willing to take the game on because Bryden have stocked it pretty well. Forward of the ball is going to kick to a contest, so instead decides to handball. And up towards where the Bryden numbers were, in a dangerous spot because that ball can be punched towards... 20 to 30 out from goal and a turnover in the wrong part of the ground because it means Shock just can't get that loose man back. So it's all one on one as Simons now smartly pushes forward. Or should I say into defence and leaves his initial man behind. It's found Carthy. Short kick and that lets Shock get their numbers back. Wellsby there under the flight of the ball. It came the way of Tarker. He's wrapped up smartly. It's in the hands of Sacred Heart again. And the boundary line is their friends. Brighton just moving the ball a bit too slow on that forward entry and slow ball movement allows Sacred Heart to set their stocks behind the footy. You've got to move it quick for the ultimate reward. Punch goes to nobody in particular, but the intention was to clear the area, and it did initially, but it's coming back over their heads. And this would be just the start for Brighton. Instead, the right goalpost is waving in the wind and a minor score to their tally. 6-7, shock, 43. Brighton, 3-5, 23. A 20-point lead as the ball there, flies boy. out of bounds in the fall. A good kick out by Kerish, but Sanderson unfortunately turns the ball over. So Osborne is the recipient of the free kick. Potentially going laterally, decides to go inside 50. Still the stagnant forward line. Good mark at the back there, not quite taken. And excellent work to recover. It looks like a dangerous free kick. No, holding the ball. So Ethan Moore, geez, he got tackled harshly from behind by O'Loughlin. No, we're not 15 play on. Big man needs to show a bit of form in. Get it moving quickly, as he does. So the pressure meter from Brighton is looking absolutely superb. Some good work there by Carthy. Gives it out the back there to Loy. Can't control the pill. 
Ball comes back inside forward 50. Some strong tackling by Wells. That should have been given on the ball. The umpire was obscured from the play. Osborne's been everywhere. Bounces off him. Almost a falcon. Gets in the hands of Carthy. Carthy gets a quick kick on the boot. Wellsby's out of position. Comes to Terrish out the back. And they should clear. So a kick down the line. And a really good mark in defence is Sigal. Who switches play. It's going to come right back. But it's going to go via the middle of the ground. Through the corridor. Using it nicely. And powering it into the forward 50. Plenty. He went up at the back. Didn't take the footy. And it flew right over the initial pack and landed willingly in the arms of Jared Miller. 22 goals on the season. It was a bit of a one-two card trick. The initial pack was bypassed. Sacred Heart complaining for interference in that marking contest. Very lucky not to give away the free kick there, Jacob Tucker. Miller steps up and takes his opportunity. A real necessary goal for the early Bombers pressure. The raid's been on since half time. 6 7 43, 4 5 29, lead at 14. That'll give Brighton a real fill up. Certainly will, and that's reward for effort because their pressure meter has gone through the roof here at Stranorama Stadium. And deservedly placed the first goal of this second half. And Colado says, I've had enough, boys. I'm going to inject myself into the engine room. Let's get the old faithful back together. And let's get a jump back on them. So, unfortunately, Jakey Tarker, that leap wasn't given away as a free kick. Mm. And Colotto injects himself into the engine room. Gets his tap straight away. Comes towards Love Lock. Holds himself up in the tackle. Good work there. Colotto gets his kick smothered. Strong work there by Draper. As he's uh, pummeled into the turf here. Good work, good work there. Almost sold some candy, was uh, glue, yes. The ball still at ground level. Jesus, a hard contest on that far side. Body smashing in everywhere. And up I says, let's have a breather, boys, because you guys are going to cook it if you keep going in this fashion. Wellsby has been so good inside 50 for Bryden. He just needed a couple of other teammates to go along with him. And Miller's put his hand up with that last goal. Who else can join the ride? A nice punch there by Colotto. Almost clearing the line there. Lovelock, smart hand pass. Gets the ball on, so they're inside 50. No, it goes out of bounds. So, pressure all over the field here by Brighton, and they needed to. And they've definitely stepped it up. So, at right half back, umpire's cool played on. I think they uh, was forced by the Sacred Heart man on the mark. All comes to ground, some good fancy footwork. They're out here if they can. McDermott hands it off. They're still on. Colotto ends up in his hands, dishes off. The big Ned, another hand pass out towards Sion. Oh, they're mucking around with it. Lovelock, can he steady the ship? He has. So all the bright work has been undone by a string of hand passes, and Lovelock gets on the end of it and slots his second. Just about to say they were overusing it, weren't they? Yeah. Goodness gracious, handball after handball after handball. But when you're a quality team, who can hit targets with those short handballs, put it just into the space that your teammate is going to take that next step into, then more often than not it results in a shot on goal. All that hard work in the opening seven minutes for Brighton undone with, with a flurry of run and Brighton just chasing those shock tails, just staring at, uh, at boot bases there. Yeah, I'd put that down to pure weight of numbers, Jack, in the end. Just pure weight of numbers and having more numbers at the right place at the right time and love lot slotted through a ripper. So the overload works well. And well coached by Carlotto. He put himself back in the middle at the ruck contest prior to that one. And swooping through and losing his feet at the most ill-opportune time allows another inside 50 for shock as they look to pile on the pressure. They don't like being scored against, Sacred Heart. They take it personally. And just drifting out the back, leaking out, assumed his teammate was going to get possession of the ball. Kakiro had seen the movie many times before. Geez, you can't leave a player like Kakiro unattended like that. That was a real lack of respect from the Brighton defenders. Smart footy from Kakiro. Should slot through his third, Jack. Got to stay shoulder to shoulder with a man this dangerous. As he takes the arrow out and he shoots it through. Just when Brighton had a pulse, Shock have gone back to back and blown it out now to a 26-point gap. 
Huge goal in the context there. So, uh, right and started this with a real steamroll approach. And back-to-back -back goals has um, put them back in their box, so to speak. And it's 8 7 55 to 4 5 29 on the scoreboard. Halfway through this Premiership quarter, and she's back out to a 26 point margin. Karkiro now with three and on his way to a 40 plus goal season. So, Colotto resumes proceedings up against Sigal on this occasion. Osborne, geez, he holds up well in a tackle, the great little on baller. Tough as nails. And uh, they've brought it back. It's the recalled. Just Throw as that up ball here. got kicked into the Ford 50. Unlucky. So a bit unlucky. Colado almost held on in the ruck contest. And on Nigel Osborne, it probably racked up almost double digits of uh, baked bean tackle of the week. The tap there by Colado clears all that initial pack of runners. It's good work at ground letter by Osborne again. And the umpire's had enough of that one and says, I'll throw it up. You saw it beautifully, Matt Gale, on that last inside 50 the mark to Karkiro. The, the reason why he was all by himself was you could call it a gamble or you could just calling it trust and faith in teammates yeah. to win the clearance. And Shock is so good at not only winning that clearance, their teammates assume that nine times out of ten they win it. And like Carlotto here, got in the right place for the mark when that kick comes from that clearance. So Kakura, uh, sorry, Kalado, beautiful kick. So at half forward, can they put in another one? That's going to be an unmarked, uh, uncontested mark there to Nigel Osborne. And all it takes, isn't it, is just that slip of the shoulder, lose that body contact, lose yeah. the eye contact on your opponent for a second, and it's game over. Yeah, so Loy in his uh, right back pocket, Jack Loy chips. Strong up in the <laughs> contest there was... Uh, McDonald couldn't take the mark. They're on here. McAuliffe is usually damaging. Pops it over the top to the big Ned. Can't take the mark as it goes over his head. Strong tackling there by Moore. Got a chip on. Oh. Beautiful kick to Kakuro. And put your glasses down, Jack Moore, because he's <laughs> lined up for his fourth. You can just see in the background there, the Sacred Heart lads are really starting to get around each other. They know it's time to press and press hard. When it's in the hands of Karkuro, she's almost done. So, he'll line up for goal number four. Umpire sprints to the left, and that's where it ends up. On the sport of scoreboard, 8-8-56, eight, 4-5-29. Eight, We're out to a 27-point margin, Jack. Halfway through this third term. Bryden, we're counting their lucky stars on that one. Just fades away and misses left. They need to really tighten down the hatches. Shock flexing their considerable muscle. Kick out from full back, plenty. Ran himself out of the square. Mark of the week, contender goes down. Umpire sprints in. He'll do it about 20 metres adjacent from the centre circle. Next goal, crucial it comes in the form of a black and yellow one. But the clearance is all blue. And they're giving Bryden the blues in this third quarter. The first goal after a solid opening. They've just faded off the boil. Shock have gone back to back. Karkiro is everywhere. And some of the bright sparks like O'Loughlin Johncock, Carthy, even Wellsby have drifted. Inside 50 appeals to kicking in danger. Umpire agrees. Pressure is getting immense, and the cracks in the damn wall are breaking. Cammy Rankin, played all his senior footy with shock. Wears some of the most beautiful boots in the comp. What's going on here? And he's being indulged ah, blood rule. with a one-on-one -on -one interview with umpire Chris Rash. I've had some very fascinating conversations with Chris Rash over the time. He's a fantastic man to have a chat to, but... He says to Cameron, you got a bit of blood, so you're going to have to come from the field and you won't get your chance to extend this lead. So Colotto, he says, I'll, uh, he's looking at these players coming on. So they managed to do a dual interchange, including the blood rule. So Colotto will have to kick outside the paint here, Jack. Lovelock on short, but when you're the coach and you've got a chance to blow this lead right open, you take the responsibility. Ooh. 
and he took it on. He looked to hit a target. The unselfish nature comes unstuck. Brighton over the back. Can they break quickly? Warner on the scene. He's deadly when it gets out in space. And now a chance to run on Lachlan Jonkoff, but he's faced with Brinkworth. And takes a one-two from Gluius, and he runs down. Looks for a nice little short target, Proud. And McAuliffe for all in the vicinity. It's boundary umpire's ball. A 27-point gap. 18 minutes played. Shock's game to lose. That was a fantastic smother there by Batchin because they were out there, Sacred Heart. And um, that was a really pivotal smother because the, the tide has definitely gone out for Brighton. Full throw in. Clotto just takes it out of, the hand, uh, out of the ruck. Some good body work there at ground level. Terrific contest. Bull comes out the back there to uh, Broadbent. He's done like a dinner. Not paid. Umpire says play on. So Colotto in the action again. And the big man's taken. And unbelievably, <laughs> I don't know how that works. You can Sorry. understand the frustration of shot because the initial tackle almost on... almost 25. Initial tackle on the Brighton player. He did put the arm out to fend and that was yeah. called play on. And the second one, it was still a free kick because he fended, but the first one should have been paid. So unfortunately for big Nettie Brooks, he's given away the free kick. And Brighton the chance to settle and get the ball back in their hands for a moment. It's a long kick down the line, into, enters the inside 50. Some strong mark there by Otis Cuff. Almost punched away by his teammate O'Loughlin. And I had a chat to Ricky O'Loughlin Johncock before the game. He prefers to go under the O'Loughlin name, but he's still got the high for next to his name. So smart mark there by Carthy. And I tell you what, if they ever needed a captain's goal, it is right now, Jackson. The captain's pushed himself forward. He's taken the responsibility. He's only kicked one goal for the season. So does Carthy. Only the 11th game for the year. He's missed a month of footy. Plan of the mark's got a metre or so. He kicks from 49. Gives it the kitchen sink. He's got it home. And there's a pulse for Brighton. And a much needed goal. And they're second for the term. And on the Sportal scoreboard, it's 8-8-56. Eight, eight, and all the fives, 35 for the Brighton team. 20 minutes down in this important third term. Still game on here, Jack. 21 point margin. Are we, I'll start again. A real warrior. Try saying that 10 times fast. Otis Carthy for this Brighton Bombers outfit. Been at the club since 2018. Had a season with Glenelg and under 18 footy. He's pushed himself forward. He hasn't stayed there. He's gone to the guts now. He's raising his head. He's raising his hand. He's He's saying, boys, I'll kick the goal, I'll get the clearance, come with me! Is there anything left? There's still plenty of time and there's certainly enough effort. Carthy stops Simons in his tracks. He's a one-man wrecking ball! But he just goes too high. And the free kick to McDermott. That was pretty because the first tack was genuine, but the Carthy was just overcommitted there. Running back, expecting the fall of the ball to come where he was going, and he guessed correctly. Boy, are we hands off. Towards Wellsby, the danger man inside 50, a one-man band so often for Brighton on their dark days. Quick flurry of handballs. O'Loughlin just uh, gave it off to his teammate, and the punch coming across to cancel out what would have been an uncontested mark and a pressure-relieving mark for Shock. And they can lock it in here, Brighton, and look for back-to-back -back goals. Someone just put out a missing person's report on Jake Tarker has not been spotted. <laughs> If there's any time to pop up with a goal, it's now. He's got Brinkworth wearing him like a glove. Umpire's seen something. Should be Miller there. It's going the way of the Bombers. Carthy with the last cheap little handball to boil. Gee, I don't know if that was in the scripts. Ruining that single. Comes off like a man who didn't have the confidence in his boot. Gave it to Boyle. Played footy at this oval through 18's reserve and league in the SANFL. Knows it like nobody else, but couldn't capitalise. So kick in, goes towards uh, Collado. Strong mark by the big man. He's got one on short. He's probably just going to pop over his head. No, it marks it just in the crucial time. Still going the short pass. Finds Ethan Moore, plays on immediately, going out the back, 
big man, ca oh, courageous mark, and an excellent mark there, McDonald. He's been a late inclusion into this side. Looks like Rankin hasn't been uh, hasn't been cleaned up properly by the stewards on the bench. He's been sent off again. So we'll have a quick uh, moment to relieve. Uh, what a mark there, flying back from McDonald. Gee, it would have been painful having that kick. I mean, he wasn't directly in front down the other end for Brighton. The handball off to Boyle missed. That would have been an axe in the back yeah, had they gone coast to coast. Pretty lucky that Brody Noble didn't go straight through him because he had the opportunity to run through him. O'Loughlin at the front of the pack can't pull down the mark. Strong tackling there. And Dougie Proud's been taken for well, Otis Carthy. Jeez, Otis Carthy. Hasn't he lifted? Absolute ball leading from the front. So him and Osborne, thick as thieves at the moment. Good smother there off the boot of uh, Dougie Proud. Carthy again. Strong tackling, I'll tell you what, he's not going anywhere, Harrison Ball, he's been done by three blokes. <laughs> so Clayton Simons will be the recipient. Couple little errors from Boyle, that missed kick on goal and just biting off way too much in situations like these, got to get it forward. Goes looking for Noble, he's got a man at the back, Kakiro can do no wrong. Plays above his height, what an astronomical mark he's taken. See, if Karkiro can add a contested marking to his resume, this uh, division is in some serious trouble. And I think Chris Broadbent's just taking the, uh, the knee mark straight out of the back of his head because that's where Karkiro put his footprint. So Karkiro lining up for number four. Best goal kicker on the ground. Only takes two steps. Interesting. Interesting run up. This man Jordan at the back hasn't had a kick for a little while. The man with the bald head, but he's um, had a pretty exciting debut and the ball trickles over the line for a rush behind. It's only a 20 point gap in all of that. This game is nowhere near done as oh, we I tick think towards. The, uh, timekeepers have put the extra point on Brighton again, so it should be 8-9. Three quarter time imminent. We'll come back to that scoreboard. It looks like a 19 or 20 point gap as it is. Three or four goals the difference. A late goal for Shock. That would be seriously damaging. A, a short sideways option if they want to waste a bit of time. But if they want to push the envelope, they can push it inside 50. And that's exactly what they do. Kyle Otto, both hands to it. Couldn't bring it down. Left a bit of collateral damage in his way. Oh! And coming out of defence. That's what you Jones want from your You had less time than you thought. Taken down in an aggressive tackle. And I think the man who was most surprised was Jarman Segal himself. Well, Noble. That's what you expect from a, a top two in the league ruckman, Brady Noble. Uh, Bradley Noble. He missed his first shot on goal, but I reckon he'll slot this one through, Jack. Other situations, the umpire might have cut him a bit of slack, but this is Division 1 footy at the pointy end of the season. And you've got to know just to get rid of the footy. He had to know there was pressure on him from Noble. And Noble ups the pressure on the Bombers cause. That's the one Brian couldn't afford. 9-6-62, the lead now 26. It's just ballooned between between a three and five goal margin and Bryden are in some serious trouble now. So that scoreboard should actually read 9-9-5-5. Now hopefully they'll uh, change that up shortly because it was 8-8 eight, eight, played 5-5. Five, five. So we've had uh, a goal and a point kicked up here. I'm sure they'll sort that out very, very shortly. But yeah, some terrific work there by Noble. And that's why he is the second best big man in this, in the top two big men in this league. Jump off around the blood rule again. If you're playing Blood Rule Bingo, you got a hat trick. Who's coming off here? It's like Kyloto on his knee. He's arguing the point, but the umpire's seen it. And uh, last time I've seen an umpire change his mind, it was never. So. At least it's an easy transition because Noble was right on that Tanar forward line. Comes straight in, and it might be a blessing in disguise for Kyloto to get a couple minutes rest and come out like a battering ram in the fourth. So, Noble. <laughs> Back in the ruck. Good tap down by both ruckmen. The two number fives uh, go at it. So we work out the back. 
to work there. So Simons should have been uh, almost holding the ball because that player definitely didn't want it. Goes to Lovelock. Lovelock to Kerrish on his damaging left boot. Makes you pay every time. Great contest there by Sigal. Only uh, punches it in the favour of McDermott. McDermott, not his best kick on his trusty left foot. And it's mopped up there by Jack Loy. The big chip packet. Comes out towards uh, Bastion. Didn't really want the ball, Bastion. And he's held it up enough not to give away a free kick. That's some bad news for Bryden as well. Broadview are closing in on Glenunga, so it could be a real decisive day in that battle for fifth spot. Some good work there by Noble. Gets the ball down to his runners. Comes out in the back there off a, a few sets of hands. Blues can't try it. Pick up the ball. Comes towards Wellsby now. Played for the free kick and he's earned it. Right on the 50 metre arc. He's so good at just stopping his body on a five cent piece to allow that tackle to go high. He's had it three or four times now today. And yeah, classy He's won two player. free kicks for it. Classy player to be able to spin on that thrippence and get the free kick when it counts. So Wellsby going to have to kick from outside the arc. Kicks from 52. Has he got the distance? He's definitely got the distance, but it fades late to the right-hand side for a minor score. 9-8-62. 5 7 37. All those scores are a little bit out of whack, but it's a decent margin here by 25 points at this stage. 29 played. Update from around the grounds at three-quarter time. Some interesting scores, and we'll bring them your way. You can watch all those games live right now, filming footy. Switch over, come back here with Sacred Heart. Look to stick the dagger in with a quick... 4A four, four forward, I've done it again. 4A forward. Try saying that 10 times fast, but the boundary umpire intervenes. Ball just trickled out of play, and that was dangerous for Bryden. Shock had about three or four on one, and that would have uh, put a full stop on things as it is. Bryden are still in this one. Let's look at that Sportal scoreboard. Shock 9 8 62. Clock stops just short of 30 minutes in that third quarter. Brighton 5-7, 37, a margin of 25 points. It was 22 at half time. So for all the toing and froing, the defensive efforts, the strong effort from the captain, Carthy, going forward and putting through a goal, Shock have extended their lead by three to 25 at three quarter time. Let's spin around the grounds. And St. Peter's have closed in on Goody Saints who lead by a point early in the fourth quarter. I mentioned Broadview had closed. They're only down now by nine points at three-quarter time against Glenunga. So if they can capture a win against a top two opponent, they could lock themselves up in that top five by the evening. Poor districts have kicked away from Tea Tree Gully by 43 at three-quarter time and Prince Alfred by 74 at the same interval here at Stradorama Stadium. Still time to get down for the Sacred Heart first 18s game. But we've still got one quarter to play. Can Brighton get themselves back into it? Or can Shocks lock in that top two finish? Find out next.
Ben, you ready? Looks like it's all one-way traffic here, Sacred Heart. Storm to yet another win in Division 1. But a 26-point gap can be overcome. We've seen it before. We'll see it again. And will one of those times be this afternoon? Jack Moore alongside Matt Gale for your fourth quarter on Filming Footy. So Colotto up against Draper. Great tap by Colotto. And we're uh, wrapped up straight away in the tackle. Ball comes to ground. Nice tap again by Colotto. Some great work there at ground level. The fend off which should not get, be paid, and it's a free kick, is it? Ball it was up. a dangerous tackle. Just a ball up. Just a ball up. So, it been interesting. A couple of decisions today mm -hmm. with the balls Quick coming whistle. out at a, at a crucial time when the play should have been played on or in different free kicks being played. So, Osborne, he's tackled front on as the 2 fives lock corners again. So the first goal really needs to go the way of the yellow and black, doesn't it? Certainly does if they're going to get anywhere near this uh, shock outfit who's been pretty impressive. Let's just say that, and particularly in that second quarter when the game was there to be won, Jack. So, excellent crowd in, tremendous conditions, beautiful day for football, and it's paid dividends so far for all that have come and watched it down here at Glenelg Oval. Tap out the back by Draper. Couldn't find a teammate to lock in on his uh, tap work. I'll tell you what, it's another strong tackle there to Nigel Osborne. Just seeing Chester Forster get uh, a bit of physio attention on the boundary line, so we'll just keep an eye on that. Doesn't look like anything too bad. A bit of lower back pain for Chester into the side this afternoon. Play goes on. And the tackles come in, and the umpire this time delays the whistle. So just evening up the last couple of times, he's blown it a little bit prematurely. We may have a stoppage in play for an injured player here, but up Osborne's to his feet. Down. And the doctor and the trainer right on the scene, but Osborne waves it away. It wasn't head-related, so he's looking to battle on, but he, he might succumb here. Yeah, he's he, done his knee. Might, hopefully it's just a corky for his sake. Hobbles off. He can't put much pressure on that right leg, so we'll keep you updated. Matty Gale will keep a keen eye on that one as the game goes on. O'Loughlin comes through. And taken down Jack Francis. He wants to leave his mark on this one, but the clearance going the way of shock as it has so many times. Lovelock comes to meet it. No prior. Ball comes out and the tackle umpire says play on. And the dirty dancing shoes have put on. And he took his way through traffic. It was a lovely little step from McDonald. It's a one-on-one -on -one tackle and a bit of a stalemate, but it's inside the right forward half. Brighton desperately need that first goal, the first couple of goals. They would have checked the filming footy stream at three-quarter time, no doubt, and seen that broad viewer pushing the Rams. Another player down for Brighton. They're falling left, right and centre and picking himself up on the half-back flank and drifting into the midfield now. Just get eyes on that for you shortly. Late, Boundary throw in out of side. Late to his feet there was Sigal. Who, no, it was actually Draper Might in the end. Draper. Yeah, it was in the end, Draper. So ball thrown in. Colotto assumes that front position. Takes it out of the ruck. Whacks him on his boot. Goes towards Lovelock. On for the fast runners out the back there. Well read in the end was Karkiro. Dishes it off to Lovelock. And Ooh. he's just pulled it. Could have put a bit of yes. icing. The fat lady was just starting to go... Starting to whistle them up, warm up those vocals. A few times now where they could have pulled out the dagger, they've pulled out the butter knife, haven't they? They certainly have. <laughs> and they just can't <laughs> quite put an end to this Bombers outfit who have been valiant all day. Only a three-point gap at quarter time. We thought, hello, Bombers really backed themselves here at their quasi-home ground just down the road from Brighton. He put the arm out. He could be in trouble. Umpire cuts him a bit of slack. Jeez, he's lucky there, O'Loughlin, because he he did not want to get rid of that he ball. Fully he fully extended the arm in the fend-off, didn't he, as didn't well? Didn't want anything to do with it. He puts himself up for the ruck contest just to make amends. Comes to the back as Simons was taken down and a strong little ragdoll-like tackle from Warner. He wasn't letting him through his grasp. He knows how much damage Clayton Simons can do, and he's... Looks like he's been given a bit of a run with Roy Warner. He's stuck to Simons like glue as the ball gets thrown in. Great work there by Colotto. Comes down to Lovelock. He's been one of their best players today. 
Ethan Moore can't quite pick up the pill. It's a good work there by Dougie Proud. I'll tell you what, Warner is definitely tagging Clayton Simons here, just around the plate. Well, it's good by Backlaw because Warner's been relatively quiet this afternoon, unfortunately. He's an enigma. He's on that half forward line, but if he's getting the ball near him, but not, not getting close to the pill just yet. So, love lock. Jockey. It's a real thing you see in all levels. Some coaches have gone out of vogue. The tagger, the run with player. Certainly when a player's right. off, the, off the hook, you just need to sacrifice one of your own and, and try to cool them down. You see how much damage a Bontempelli does when he's not looked after in the AFL. And Clayton Simons, at this level, can, can rip you apart. Yeah, Port Adelaide do it very, very well. I've got that young ringer that runs with players on a week-in, week-out basis. Drew, indeed. Yeah, Willem Drew. Interesting first name. So Wellsby taken and looking for the free kick. Nothing given, Jack. Another one there where he's tried to draw the high contact and the umpire wise to it on that occasion. So Colotto and Draper lock horns. Colotto's probably played a 60-40 ruck today. Usually the other way around with Doyle in the ruck. Driving the car. Comes out to Warner, uses his speed. Can he get onto his left peg? He does. Goes drilling inside 50. No mark taken. Jakey Tucker at the back. Where's he been? He's a wizard. Can he snap it? Oh, drops off the chest of Miller. No mark taken. He's looking for a free kick. Nothing given. Comes out to Simons. Simons kicks to a one on four. Draper smashed his own teammate. Carthy's uh, been taken from behind. No free kick paid to him. He could have gone down here, Carthy. He hasn't moved. I hope he's okay. Back to the action. And work work by Noble. And Carthy yeah. looks like he, he's up now. He's okay. From a Brighton perspective, you just simply couldn't let that come to stoppage. You had four on one, uncontested mark, and yeah. even though it's a ball up, it's a real loss. So Colotto and Draper thrown out of there. Goes to McDermott, gets on his trusty left foot, goes long down the line looking for Jordan. Jordan's out muscled in the contest. Good work there by McDonald. Takes on Jordan. And runs out of tarmac, and it's out of play, Jack. Half forward for Sacred Heart. That last inside 50 coming the way of Warner. Just trying to make Simons work both ways. It almost came off. Target had the snap, but he was just five metres too far out, and the dropped mark. Another missed opportunity on the wing moments ago with four on one. Brighton letting their opportunities slip through their hands. They need to take one. Otherwise, this game is going to tick away from them on the scoreboard and on the clock. Another chance going their way. So high up and under, mark that if you can. There'll be four or five going for it. Hands to it, uncontested fashion. In the end, tap. It fell in the hands of Warner. He didn't know much about that. Looked down, the ball was in his grasp. Tough and customer, was, Tap. And he was taken by Tap. And talk about taken. Another tackle there coming the way of Boyle, who was claimed. They're off to the races now, running in waves. Oh, oh, the Sacred right. Heart way. And this could just about close the door. Lowby running in. He had an open goal in front of him. The Brighton defenders closed. And the tackle was just over egregious. Well, if I was the umpire hit, I'd just blow 25. And that pretty much takes him to the goal square. And that's how you cause, uh, that's how you get out of a ruckus. As you'd know, Jack, you've had the, the green Kermit suit on plenty of times, your good self. Smart umpire in there, Matt Harris, got himself in, made the presence, made sure the players knew he was there. And more times than not, Divi 1 level, these players are smart, intelligent. They know that if they cause any further havoc for their team, they're going to get dragged pretty quickly. And they lead the scene of the crime. Here's Lowby. Had a stint in Victoria at the Uni Bucks in 2018, the Victorian Amos. And he gives that ball plenty of air. And the air does the rest, it drifts it away. And Bryden's chances, they're slipping away, but they're in the breeze. Can they capture it? Time might get the better of them. Some good kicking in there by Plenty. Done a delightful job out of that last line of defence today. Sigel hands it on. Comes out to Warner, 
fortuitous, lands on his chest. Warner, not his best kick, but it should land on a teammate's chest again, and it does. Puts his arms up there, Ty Murphy. Interesting way of acknowledging his mark. Goes to Wellsby, who eventually is paid the mark. Got a tough angle as he lines up for his third after kicking two opening term goals, Jack. As you said, Matt, Wellsby with two. If there's one person that's going to put the bombs on their back and drag them back in this, a, this kick must go through, and B, it's going to be Tom Wellsby. So Wellsby, difficult angle, shouldn't have any uh, uh, problems with the distance. Slides across, it's a helicopter-looking kick. Osborne has recovered, he's back on the field. Should have been a push in the back. Umpire did not see it that way, just enjoyed the Osborne ride. The OCTR, uh, ORTC, sorry, for the mark of the day, not given. Full thrown up, Colotto. Plays the percentages, pushes towards the boundary line. Strong tackling there by Miller. Looking for a free kick, nothing doing. You're going to and rely on Mark on the day, it. contenders, to get your inside 50 opportunities. It's uh, probably no way kick. back for Bryden, but it's, 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 it's in the right spot, isn't it? It is in the right spot. Colotto tries to use that boundary again. Miller's kick smothered. <laughs> Another kick smothered. Kerish, that's the man you want the ball on the hands on the ball. Good work there by Noble. No Mark paid. He should have been paid that mark. Comes out the back and a strong mark and a beautiful mark in the end. It's taken by Dwayne McGarry, the rock of Jabota. McGarry's got a load of back in there. Time's against him. We've already played 11 minutes. He goes to a one on three. I wouldn't recommend that again. And Sacred Heart have more numbers than a number chart. And they move it away towards the outer side. Ooh. And in the end, settling for a boundary throw in and perhaps deserves more. Jeez, you're lucky he didn't give away a free yeah, kick there. Yeah, that Warner. ball was, was well and truly out of bounds. It was a dangerous tackle over the boundary line. And he was taken down and no need for it. Warner escapes the umpire's whistle on that occasion. We're not going to be trying that game on many times. Clearance coming out. Spiral ball up and under. This could go anyone's way. Oh. It goes straight through the gate. And running into an open goal, McAuliffe. He closes the gate. There will be no air raid today. And Sacred Heart will take the chocolates at Strata Armour Oval. And there's a real team play there, Kakuro. Could have had a blaze there. Saw two men over the top. Found the right option, McAuliffe. And he did the damage. And it's almost good night, Irene, for the Brighton Bombers. You'd suggest it would be the case. They're not going to double the score in the next 10 minutes. So, uh, yeah, Sacred Heart doing the damage control when they needed to. And they've made every post a winner at the crucial phases of this game. And I'll tell you why, Matt, that I've called that as a, a Sacred Heart game winner is I was lucky enough to be at the Bryden and St. Peter's game a few weeks ago. And Bryden kicked away to a similar margin with similar time left. And St. Peter's stormed back to win. So I'm selfishly hoping that... <laughs> Bryden could do the same and give us a grandstand finish, but it doesn't look like it's going to go that way as Shock have their foot on the accelerator. So McDermott drills one inside 50. McGarry chimes in. And he's McGarry on his best kick. So I think that might be young Chester. He's back out there. Indecisive. With a margin yeah. like this, you say to him, in your first game for the season, Chester, why don't you go back and give yourself a goal? He's Simon's coming around the back. Had experience. Sneaky oh, one. There he is. So Simons. Does he go? Oh, he gets his kick smothered. So Osborne read that script very well. Hadn't got much support though. Osborne just weaves out of the uh, phone box there, but no one home. Oh, from nowhere comes Warner. So is there a little bit of a heartbeat? And no, no there's <laughs> not. So tappity tap 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 says I'll take that back. And he's got a switch on. Ignoring the switch at this stage. Deliberate approach goes to Jewhurst who has Kerish on, goes to him. Good pressure by O'Loughlin. Kerish is up to the task Ooh. and lands it on the chest of Rankin. O'Loughlin just left a fist in the midriff there as that kick came out of the defensive 50. And they may be using Harry the Horse on the camera's vision a little bit later during the week. Not spotted pretty by Pretty unnecessary there by Kerish. Very undisciplined by O'Loughlin. it was, yep. So Brinkworth goes to Ethan Moore. Moore plays on. Played his part in the, today's proceedings, Ethan Moore. And goes Kerry over the top. Here come Colotto. Colotto just pounces on it. 
just says I'll take it from here <laughs> and I'll slot it through. So Colotto, the king, is gone. I'm going to leave from the front, boys. We'll shut the gate on the way through. On the score to scoreboard, 11-11. And we're just waiting for the Stratorama to stop doing a bit of strutting along. And it's 11-11-77, 40-point margin now. 5-7, 47, uh, 37, 15 minutes down, final turn. There's a gap in the game now, 40 points. Kyle Otto steps up to the plate. He was observing the feast from afar, and he walks through the door and decides to pick himself up a, a big turkey leg and take a bit of a bite. Tell you what, he's in contention now for the player of the match, I think. Uh, along with Lovelock, there's been some really solid con contenders here from the uh, home side. Just needed that string to his bow. Simons has been well held and well claimed by Warner in that run with roll. So some other Sacred Heart players have had to put their hand up. This afternoon they put their hand up nicely and the debutants Forster and Jordan, they've held their head high as well. We're there by Big Nettie Brooks, just getting caught up in the action there. Just at that incident from O'Loughlin, we saw that Seb Kerrish was down for quite a while, even after that goal went through. He's Made his way to the bench now, so we'll keep an eye on that. So we work out of defence here. Osborne in the thick of things. Draper to Warner. Has his kick smothered by Noble. So, Bryden, their first quarter was pretty good. Their first 10 minutes or so. The defensive effort was strong. And Sacred Heart have just chipped away at them ever since. And they've been valiant, and they've had opportunities, but you need to take every single one against an opponent with a grand final and a premiership on their minds. Well, they definitely have, because they've kicked nine out of the last 11 goals. Strong mark down there in defence by Osborne, who goes to Carthy. So the captain's uh, definitely played his part today. Cut the players down in that marking contest. Goodness me, Matt. Broadview have closed to three points behind Glenunga with a matter of minutes left in the fourth quarter. So fifth place up for grabs because Tea Tree Gully are getting their uh, noses rubbed in it this afternoon. Some indecisive <laughs> possession of the ball on the far side. And should be taken here by Sanderson. And St. Peter's are going to record a victory at Goodwood. So that relegation spot is not decided yet. It'll come down to the percentage because there will be equal on points. Back to the action. Ball kicked inside 50, looking for Wellsby. Chest mark probably wasn't the option. Should have gone with the Jukes. Doesn't. Ball comes back with some interest down the other end. And we've had a bit of a free kick fan here. And it will go in favour of Elijah Lowby. So as it stands, St. Peter's will stay ninth, but that gap to Goody, as you mentioned, that one point courtesy of that Goodwood draw. So you're right. And just moving down the food there is Noble. Geez, he's a very handy ruckman and what a one-two punch they've got with him and Carlotto. Interesting to see if he's got the distance on the leg here, Noble. Certainly thinks he has. So Sting taken right out of this one. Noble kicks from the paint. Has he got the distance, the big man? Oh, Colotto just comes off his hands and probably Drapers as well for a minor score. It's 11, 12, 78 on the Sportal scoreboard. 5, 7, 37, 18 and a half almost down in this final turn. This one looks like it's in the books, but one that is definitely not. Broadview have hit the front against Glenunga. 22 played on filming footy. Switch over to that for the closing stages of what looks like a fascinating contest. A win here for Sacred Heart with percentage. That'll boost them up to second. Prince Alfred have taken care of Old Ignatians. So they will go top of the Div 1 table unless Glenunga can pull out a victory in the closing stages. We'll keep you updated. That is happening live right now on Filming Footy. I think we just saw full time there, Jack, on that other game. St. Peter's guaranteed, or should I say certified, or perhaps the word I'm looking for is... Uh, Epic, an amazing victory. Not many, a lot, in fact, had ridden them off and had them relegated. But uh, there's that one premiership point gap to travel to Goody Saints, who have shown some decent form in recent weeks and secure a win. Well, finals 
spot, that fifth spot, top four order, relegation spot, going right down to the last couple well, of weeks. Just to think that St. Peter's actually lost those premiership points in their first clash against Old Iggy's on their home deck. I actually commentated that game, and there was a there was a player from West Adelaide, uh, from East Arnhem Land, who filled. Well, he obviously it was his first game, and they uh, didn't have those points down with the uh, stipulation of eligibility playing for an old collegiate team. So McDermott with the action. Kicks to Karkuro, he's been in the thick of it. He's been the author of the book in the forward line. And this. deserves another goal. And a tough kick on his hands here, but this. he's capable of doing it. This is his fourth, and uh, this would push him right into contention for those Archie Stongs. He's been a class above, and not only kicking goals, defensive pressure. Karkuro, purposeful approach. Bang! Uh -huh. And he slots that through as easy as you like from 50. Tell you what, that is an outstanding goal and effortless in the end. That's the kick of a man who knows himself. It's the kick of a man who is primed and ready to take the finals by storm. We've seen a contested mark added to his game this afternoon. We've seen four goals. We know he has the goals. The defensive pressure inside forward 50. A man who has all the experience, South Adelaide. Eagles at the Sandful and the Achunga Footy Club during the COVID interruptions. He's now at Sacred Heart. And Matty Gale, this team, along with Prince Alfred and Glenunga, this final series in a few weeks' time, it's going to be something to watch. But not only that, the three weeks leading up to it, we've got a number of four-point matches. They're all live on filming footy and on demand, so watch them anytime. Can Brighton add a little bit of respectability to the scoreline? Darcy Gluyas puts himself in the hole and says, not today, you're not getting past me. A solid percentage boosting win means keeping Brighton to as little in the goal column as possible. Last possession free kick going the way of the Bombers. Live update coming out of Broadview and 25 on the clock. Glenunga with a kick for goal from 40 out to put themselves back in front. So good news for Bombers fans, if this goes through, we'll keep you posted. Mark deep in defence, and Sacred Heart look to boost the stats as Clayton Simons gets back. He's had a bit of a rough trot, being worn by Bryden defenders at multiple points. Here is one of them who's done the job. Warner is taking a lovely tackle, and the handball comes, and it rides itself inside 50 again, going up with one hand, but a push in the back. Let's check in with that Broadview game. That kick for goal from Glenunga has missed. So Broadview by two points, 26 played. Ball over the back. And can the debutant sign off with a goal to his name? He's got one already. Kailato, gee, he's going to do well to keep it in and kick a goal from there. He can't. Tried to stick the Duke out to fool the umpire, but the umpire wasn't buying it. So three goals, three this quarter to the solitary point for Brighton. And uh, it's all been one-way traffic for Sacred Heart. Very interesting score lines around the league as the Division 1 starts hitting the pivotal phase of the season. Beautiful tap to Colado. Is he, is he kicked the point oh. there? So this is something out of almost footy legend. I don't know how he missed that. Could have been a Percy Jones and kicked it into the post, but that's as, um, that's as easy as you like from a tap. Ruckman and couldn't finish and do the dishes on that. So closing phase of this final term and take it heart. Well deserved victory. Great kick from Jake Plenty again out of that full back. Just in the replay and the sporter replay he's managed to uh, actually kick it through the behind line from a metre out. So he's <laughs> he's missed the post, missed the goals. The only blemish on Karkiro's resume this afternoon. He's been Jeez. An absolute shining light. What a player. And you have to hand it to Sacred Heart recruitment. So often you see teams get promoted, look to recruit players, and they go for the big names. Don't always work. And Karkiro has the experience, is a big name, but someone who's filled a real need, as has Kyle Otto, as has Simons as well. So McDermott whacks it on his boot. Fortuitously lands in a teammate's lap, and that teammate is Elijah Ware. Goodness me! From 25 straight in front. Matt Gale, Glenunga have kicked a goal on the siren. 
to win the game against Broadview. They've won by four points with a kick for goal on the siren. So, Brighton fans, your fifth place chances are not done with yet. So, Elijah Lowey lines up straight in front, 25 out, and he slots it through for his first. And a much deserved goal. And on the sport of scoreboard. 13 13, 91, Brighton 5 7 37. Closing stages of this final term. So, a landmark day, what could have been as Brighton have been swept away here and Broadview were in front for all but the last kick of the game against Glenunga, a team looking for a top two spot. Instead, Glenunga will find themselves at the top of the Division I table and Prince Alfred will join them. So wins for all of the top four as they push themselves closer to a final series. 25 and a half gone. It's been a beautiful day. It's a bit cloudy and overcast now. The sun was out for the majority of it. And if you're still keen for some local footy, the Sacred Heart First 18 match is coming up right after this. Right down here at Stradorama. In the ruck again and doing well. Dylan Draper won the hit out and it's locked up again. Proud with the tackle and gee, what we thought could have been a bit of an earth shattering day. It, it definitely has been for St. Peter's. They've kept themselves alive, but that top five, that fifth place race is, is still well and truly on. So Draper switches the ball out to Warner. Strong mark by Warner, who's manned up on Simons this uh, quarter. Goes inside 50, no mark taken. Good work by Jolly at the back there. Oh, sorry, Miller. So Miller goes to Tarka. Tarka almost gets a free kick. Nothing doing for him. And that is holding the ball. And it is paid accordingly. A quick word and thank you once again to our sponsors. Buddy Bet, Sportal, Dartfish, Archie's, Farmers Leap Winery at Padthaway. For the Coach of the Week Award, Roll the Dice Media Award for Player of the Year, Thirsty Camel Golf of the Week and Bianco. Mark of the Week as Bryden have a chance to take a consolation goal with them back to Bryden Oval. So Tom Murphy will have the final kick of the game on the siren, or after the siren. Resting up against the boundary line. He's going to have to kick this all of 45 metres from the boundary. Close to the man on the mark. Almost touches it, and it fades late and drifts to the right-hand side post. Final scores here at Stradorama. 13-13-91, 5-8-38. A nice whopping 53-point victory, and a well-deserved one at that high hold, Jackson. Yeah, what a day. It was, we need more of these games at these SANFL venues. The crowd, the appetite for local Adelaide Footy League games. It's definitely out there. It's present. We see it on full display and Sacred Heart with lots of players with experience at Glenelg and as did Brighton. Players out there left, right and centre who knew this ground and the way Sacred Heart played in that second half. It was tight at half time. First quarter, three point game. 22 at the half, 26 at three quarter time. It still really was anyone's game. But a four goal to zero final term with Sacred Heart holding Bryden scoreless in the second quarter and the fourth quarter. They make their mark and really put themselves up for that top two spot. And for a second there, we thought they might just get it with Glenunga in trouble of losing. But as it is, the status quo remains the same in the top four. As we go to sleep this evening, it will be Glenunga, Prince Alfred, Sacred Heart and Port District. Business as usual in the top four. But as we've seen, Broadview had a chance to push themselves into that fifth spot. We'll let percentage do the work on who takes that spot at the close of play this afternoon. But Gullies, the Bombers, Broadview and Goody Saints all losing. And it will come down to percentage who finishes in fifth spot this afternoon. But what a win for Sharks. They march on towards what will be, uh, hopefully for them, a very successful finals campaign. Yeah, you'd hope so. And they're going to um, be there when the whips get cracking in September. Uh, there's plenty more ebbs and flows left in this season. As you see, there's always one game every week where the top four teams are under an enormous amount of pressure or under the pump or, or go down. So, um, yeah, there's plenty more ebbs and flows left in this season, Jack. And uh, it's been a privilege to be down here at Stradorama this afternoon for this wonderful clash and a, and a pretty savage result in the end. 
because at three quarter time there was only 27 points and they were still in it Brighton if they were good enough blew it out to 53 which good teams do and in the end do it pretty very very comfortably big thank you to Harry the horse on the camera he's going to stay around for those that are still here at the ground plenty of action still here with Sacred Hearts uh, first 18 coming up against uh, I think it is Jeez, I don't know who it is. I think it's Ignatius. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, Emmanuel. Uh, that Sorry, one, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. The eye. <laughs> the eye for Emmanuel. Uh, so big thanks to Harry. He's doing a double shift this afternoon. But yeah, magnificent call and a terrific result in the end for Sacred Heart. And they lock away that top four. Indeed, Matt Gale and I, Jack Moore, will bring you uh, the uh, top three players. But you're going to have to tune in to Between the Posts and Tommy Javor's Division 1 wrap to find out who gets the three, the two and the one. In the race, of course, with a Roll the Dice Media Award for Player of the Year. Before we wrap it up, some final scores from around the ground. St. Peter's defeated Goody Saints by 14. Broadview, unlucky. Lenunga with a goal on the siren to win by four. Port District took, took care of Tea Tree Gully by 48. And Prince Alfred up by 98 against Old Ignatians. As Matt Gale said, it's been an absolute privilege to cover this match from Strata Armour Oval here in Glenelg. Whatever you're doing for the rest of your weekend, have a really enjoyable one. It's a farewell from Strata Armour where it's been Sacred Heart in a comprehensive victory this afternoon.